In this lesson, I get to upset the engineers and the woodworkers by talking about the bevel tool, but then I'll make it up to you by talking about edge loops. First though, let's hit tab to go into edit mode on our cube, and I'll left click on the edge of the toolbar to drag that out, and select the bevel tool, which is just under inset faces. Beveling is something that we usually do to edges, so I'll select a vertex and then shift select another one to select the edge in between, and then I can just left click and drag on this yellow gizmo to make a chamfer. That's right, the bevel tool in Blender is mostly used for making chamfers. Of course, you can make a bevel by going all the way to one of these edges. I guess that's the technical definition of it, but that's almost never needed in computer graphics, so it's very rare that you'll actually need to make a bevel. But you can do that with the bevel tool, as well as make a fillet, or a fillet, depending on how you want to say it. I definitely went on a YouTube rabbit hole to figure out what the consensus was there, but I never found it. Regardless, as you left click and drag to use the bevel tool, before you let go of your mouse, you can just scroll up on your mouse wheel to increase the number of segments and make a fillet. Then release your mouse to confirm. If you want to do that before the fact, then you can just increase the segments up here in the tool settings. Beveling is mostly something that we do to edges, but we can also do it to vertices. Simply switch this from edges to vertices, and now we can round off our corners. The bevel tool has a ton of options that go with it, and it's really powerful, and I'd recommend exploring them in the redo panel so that you can see what each of them do in real time. Here we can set the width to an exact number, change how Blender calculates the width, or change the shape. We could make it concave or convex. We don't have time to go over all of these, but another one that I'd like to point out is all the way at the bottom, which is the profile type. Right now we're controlling the profile with the shape control up here, but we can also set this to custom and draw our own curve simply by left clicking and dragging in the curve editor. And this way you can make your profile as complex as you'd like. If you'd like to see this in more detail, simply increase the segments. Beveling is another one of those operations that's so common that it has its own hotkey, which is Control-B. I'll hit 2 on the number row to go to edge select mode, select an edge, or even multiple edges. I'll even select this whole bottom face here, and then hit Control-B to create a bevel all the way around. It remembered our last settings, which is helpful. I don't know if I need the bottom of this to be quite so crazy though, so I'll set the profile type back to super ellipse, and I'll decrease the segments from 59, because that's kind of a lot. Now, if you try to bevel a single vertex, or vertices that are disconnected, you'll notice that nothing will happen, even though the bevel tool can be used on vertices. And that's just because we have to switch this to affect vertices rather than edges. If you want to do that right away without changing anything else, then you can either hit Control B, and then hit V to toggle on vertex mode, or hit V again to turn that off. Or you could select a single vertex and then do a shift control B. That'll jump you right into vertex mode. All right, now we'll go back to my box select tool. And I want to remind you of something that I said way back when we were first learning how to transform objects. Notice how if I select an edge and then hit control B to bevel, and then I'll just scroll all the way down such that there are no segments, this becomes a perfect 45 degree cut. That's because the original edge met at 90 degrees and that was just sliced straight in half. However, if I go into object mode and I scale this along the X axis, of course that's gonna get stretched out. Hopefully that makes intuitive sense. However, what happens to a lot of people is that they might add a new cube and then scale it along the X axis, get it right into place, maybe scale it along the Y, and then they'll go to bevel it. They'll go into edit mode, and let's say we'll select this entire top face, and then control B to bevel. And all of a sudden we're getting a pretty bad result. Well, it's actually not a bad result, it's just stretched because our object was stretched in object mode. If we were to go through and actually clear our scale by hitting backspace over it, then you'll notice that this is indeed a perfect 45 degree angle all the way around. However, the stretching from the object scale is being applied on top of that, and so that's why we're getting this non-uniform result. The fix for this is simply to apply scale before beveling. I'll go back to object mode here, and then we can go to object, apply, and apply scale. We can also get to that from the hotkey control A. I do that quite a lot. Now when we go into edit mode and hit control B to bevel this same face, now we get that perfectly even chamfer all the way around. This doesn't just apply to the bevel tool, this is true of all tools in Blender. So if something in edit mode is behaving weirdly, try applying your scale and seeing if that fixes it, because a lot of times it will. Now let's go one down from bevel in the toolbar and talk about loop cuts. When you enable the loop cut tool and hover over your mesh, 
then you'll get a preview of the cut that you're about to make if you were to left click. So let's left click. And now we have a new set of edges that wraps all the way around the mesh. This is called an edge loop. To make a cut, just hover your mouse over an edge that's perpendicular to the direction that you want to cut in. So if I want to make a vertical cut, then I'll hover my mouse over a horizontal edge. Or if I want to make a horizontal cut, I'll hover my mouse over a vertical edge. This is just a click and then you're done type of tool, but you can also left click and hold and then move your mouse to slide this along the mesh. This is another tool that's often accessed via hotkeys, but unfortunately, unlike the others, this one isn't the same letter as the name of the tool. In this case, it's Control R. I couldn't come up with a good mnemonic device for remembering that, so if you have one, let me know in the comments. But I'll go to my box select tool and then just hit Control R. That'll jump me into a loop cut mode, and then I can just left click on the mesh like before. But this time, it'll jump me into a slide, and then I can move my mouse and then click again in order to confirm. So this one's kind of a two step process Control R, left click, and then left click again. If you don't want it to slide, then you can simply hit escape or right click in order to cancel the move portion of the operation. So that's control R, left click to make the cut, and then right click to cancel the move. You can also make more than one cut if you want by hitting control R, and then just scrolling up on your mouse wheel. Now, this same kind of slide that happens when you insert an edge loop is useful in all kinds of situations. For example, if I take my mesh here, select everything with A, and then I'll hit R to rotate, just at some crazy angle, such that it's not lined up with the world or the local axes of the object, it can be really hard to move an edge along this surface. Hitting G and trying to eyeball it will definitely be a surefire way to get to a messy mesh. So instead of moving edges along it, we'd want to slide them. We can do that with the edge slide tool towards the bottom of the toolbar. Just select that, and then left click and drag on the yellow gizmo to slide an edge along. You can do this with one edge or even a set of edges. I'll hold shift to select multiple and slide this whole set of edges upwards. You can even use this to slide whole loops if you select the loop first. To do that, select one edge, go to the select menu, down to select loops, and choose edge loops. Now you can slide this as a whole. In that same menu, you can also select edge rings, which is the set of edges running in the other direction. So I'll select an edge, go to select, select loops, and this time I'll choose edge rings. Edge rings aren't as common to use, but as I'm modeling, I'm constantly selecting and manipulating edge loops. Of course, I don't want to go to the menu all the time, so to select one, I'll alt left click on an edge. That will select the whole loop that it's a part of. Then I can easily slide it around or do whatever else I need to. Again, that's just alt left click on an edge. If you do want to select an edge ring, then that's a control alt left click. But this is slightly different if you're using the emulate three button mouse that I showed you for tablet users. Since the Alt hotkey is taken for that configuration, in order to select an edge loop, then you're going to want to double click. You can also select edge loops in vertex select mode. So I'll hit one on the number row, then I can just Alt left click on any edge to select that edge loop, but just in vertex select mode. Selecting a loop of faces is incredibly similar. I'll hit three to go to face select mode, and then Alt left click on any edge to select the loop of faces that runs perpendicular to it. If you do this alt left click in the middle of a face, then it's kind of a crapshoot on which one that you might select. So instead of selecting the face itself, try alt left clicking on an edge to make the operation make a little bit more sense. Now working with and controlling loops is an absolutely essential part of the 3D modeling process. It's something I talk a lot about in the fundamentals of mesh modeling and in the mesh modeling bootcamp courses. So if you want to get into topology and the theory behind modeling whatever object you have in your imagination, those are the courses to go to. For now though, as you're just getting started, I want to show you just a couple more things about working with edge loops. First is that they don't have to be complete loops that go all the way around the mesh. To show you that, I'll go into object mode and delete this cube. Then I'll hit shift A, add mesh and monkey. Then I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And look what happens when I hit control R and hover my mouse over the mesh. These loops twist and turn a lot more than the others did, and they don't necessarily go all the way around and meet back where they started. That's because loops can't pass through two things, triangles or n-gons. The eyes are a good example of a triangle here, and if we hit Control r and try to slice through it, Blender is going to hit that triangle and not know which direction to go in. It could either go right or left, there's no way to make that decision programmatically, so it just stops. The same thing goes for faces with more than four sides. So to make one of those, I'll go to Vertex Select Mode and just select one of these vertices, and hit Control b and then V while I'm in Bevel Mode to bevel that vertex. And now all of these faces around that new face have more than four sides. 
when I hit Control R to add an edge loop, notice how it stops at all of those faces and doesn't continue onward. There are some special cases where Blender can figure it out and so it just cuts through anyway, but for the most part it'll stop at any face that does not have four sides. The more you model though, the more you'll see this as helpful functionality more than a problem. But it is something that's good to know right away. For example, what I want you to do to practice these tools is add a cylinder, Shift A, add mesh and cylinder, and before you move on to the next lesson, I want you to transform this into something. It could be a vase, it could be a can or a cup or a bowl or an antenna or anything that's roughly cylindrically shaped. One thing that you'll find is that you can't add an edge loop up here at the top. Of course, if you add one on the sides, then it won't be able to pass through that area, but you won't be able to make any details up here at the top or at the bottom with your edge loops. However, what you can do is go to face select mode, select these faces, and then use your inset faces tool that we talked about in the last lesson and inset these inwards. Now you can add as many loops as you want around the outside of that circle. So go ahead and with the tools that you've learned so far, try making something cool.